Hello, I'm so excited for you to watch this next tutorial video, which is a guest tutorial video because the guests always make more sense than I do and they're a little less insane in a good way. Trust me. Um, today we have Golan Levin, a uh, inspiration of mine. In fact, he was the inspiration behind the uh, clocks coding challenge that I recently did uh, and a port of the John Midas 12 o'clocks project. Um, Golan Levin has been making art with computers and a variety of things for a very long time. Uh, you can see all about him, more about him on his website, which will be in this video's description. He is a professor at the Carnegie Mellon University, the director of the Studio for Creative Inquiry there. Um, I hope you decide after watching this video that you want to learn all about Golan Levin. And uh, he's going to talk to you about something that I can't believe I don't have a tutorial about. Somehow I don't. Uh, I don't even know how to say it. Modulo, modulus, something like that. Good thing I'm not making the tutorial. All aboard the Modulo coding train thing with Golan Levin. <laughs> Enjoy. Hey everyone, I'm Golan Levin, and I am so thrilled to be here on the coding train today. Um, thanks so much, Dan, for having me here. I'm over here. Here's over here. And uh, today uh, we're going to talk about the modulo operator, which is this weird non-alphanumeric character. When I first started learning to program, I was looking over the shoulder of programmers and I saw, you know, lots of these strange characters and like plus I understood and minus I understood, but like this weird percent sign? Huh? Like what does that mean? And so today the topic is the modulo operator. Modulo. Okay, so uh, you might see, uh, for example, a sentence that looks like this, you know, like uh, uh, A equals uh, five mod three or something like that. And if it's processing, you might say like int A or if it's JavaScript with P5, it might be like, you know, var A. But the key here is this 5% sign three. What's that? That's what we're gonna talk about. Okay, so uh, what we should really do is talk about the different parts of this. This part here is called the dividend, just so we know. This part here is called the divisor. Okay, this part here is called the remainder. Okay, so the modulo operator is remainder after division. And what does that mean? Well, after you divide something by something else, sometimes it goes in evenly, but sometimes there's a little bit left over. And that's the spare change that we're interested in. So to do this, we're gonna look at a table of the mod operation. And it's gonna look something like this. I'll say, here's the mod, and here's the remainder after division. And we'll start with five, because I've got five fingers. Okay, and I'll, I'll start over here with five mod five. Now, what is five mod five? One way to read that is to say, I'm gonna take five, divide it by five, and look, what le what, and look at what's left over. Well, when I do that, I have five divided by five. Well, that goes in exactly once, and there's nothing left over. Five goes into five perfectly. So, uh, since there's nothing left over, the remainder is zero. Now, how about six mod five? What's that? That's a funny looking five there. All right, six mod five. Well, five goes into six once, and what's left over? Obviously one, one's left over. So that's cool. That is the remainder after division, right? Uh, how about seven mod five? Well, five goes into seven once, and there's two left over, right? You know, after you divide it in, there's still five, then six and seven, so there's two left over. How about eight mod five? Uh, easy, there's three left over. Five goes into eight once and there's three left over. Nine mod five, okay? And well, five goes into nine once and with four left over, okay? And how about 10 mod five? 10 mod five. Be careful here, five goes into 10 twice, but the answer is not two, the answer is zero because there's zero left over after five goes into 10. Right? Five goes into 10 twice, zero left over. Now, the thing I wanna bring your attention to is this interesting pattern here, which is zero, one, two, three, four, zero, right? Because it's gonna keep repeating that way. If I say 11 mod five, five goes into 11 twice. That's my bottom here, okay? Five goes into 11 twice, but there's one left over. And let's go back up the other way. If I say four mod five, what happens when this number is less than this one? That's okay. Five goes into four zero times, but there's four left over. And three mod five? Well, easy, there's three left over after five goes into three zero times. Two mod five gives us two left over, gives us one left over. And here we see this pattern, one, two, three, four, zero, one, two, three, four, zero. In fact, if we're taking something mod five, 
we will get a pattern that goes from zero up to five minus one or four. We'll say zero, one, two, three, four, zero, one, two, three, four, zero. That's the pattern we're gonna see. So let's hop over to the code. So I have uh, p5.js uh, up on, on the screen, and we can you know, just try and see what happens when we print something like 5 mod 5. Does it actually check out? Let's try it out. Oh, look, it prints out 0. But if I say 6 mod 5, and I run that, I get 1. Let's run a little for loop and just kind of verify this for ourselves. I'll say for var i equals 0, i is less than, let's say, uh, 20 i plus plus, and we will print something like, um, I mod 5, okay? I run that, and if we look at what the result is, we'll see this pattern we talked about. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, right? Now, that's because we're taking something mod 5. Let's try a different number over here in this, in this mod place. Let's try uh, I mod 3. Now, let me extend this window down and extend this up. And we see 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. Remember, I said it's going to go from 0 up to the number we're taking the mod of minus 1. So uh, the remainder is 0, the remainder is 1, the remainder is 2, and the next one is a multiple of 3, so the remainder is 0 again. All right? In fact, to make it even more clear, we can print out i plus a space plus i mod 3, and we'll sort of see what this looks like together. Right? We'll see, oh, 0 mod 3 is 0, 1 mod 3 is 1, 2 mod 3 is 2, 3 mod 3 is 0 again, because 3 goes into 3 once with 0 left over. So, why are we really here today? Well, I've seen Dan do a lot of lectures where he sort of mentions the mod operator in passing, and I thought it'd be nice to focus on that and actually like, see what we could do with it in its own way. Like, how could we use it to do interesting and creative art? Um, and so I've, I've, we're going to set up some examples where we sort of see what the mod operator can do. Okay, so here's a real simple boilerplate application. Let's get started with a nice little mod project. Um, I set up the canvas at 600 by 400 pixels, and then I've set the background to white. Let's draw a series of lines whose lengths are based on uh, a mod of an iterating number. I'll say four. I'm not typing. What happened there? Okay. Uh, for var i equals zero. I is less than, let's say, the width of the screen, I plus plus. And let's just draw a little line. We'll say something like, um, uh, I'll say that there's a var, I'll call it Y, and it'll be equal to I uh, mod, let's pick a number like five, like we did before, I mod five. And we'll draw a line which is located I across, starting from the top, zero, down, to I across, Y down. And let's draw that. Now, do we get anything? Hmm, actually, it looks like we did, but you have to zoom all the way in. Do you see that? Oh, it's happening there. We're going to have to kind of zoom in on that to see it better, though. Let's choose not I mod 5, but I mod 50. And if I run that, now we can really see it. So what's this strange pattern? Well, in fact, it's counting up. Remember, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, when we were looking at I mod 5. Here it's counting up from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 49 when it repeats again. Uh, and then it repeats, it jumps back down to 49. So, uh, from 49 to zero. So, one thing that mod is really useful for is taking a number which is counting up indefinitely, for example, and producing from it a periodic pattern, okay? Which is constrained, tightly constrained, to a region that we care about. So here, for example, I have a number, it's going up to the width, um, and uh, which you know, extends, in this case, up to 600. Uh, but even though the width extends up to 600, I, which is going up to the width, mod 50 keeps going 0 to 49, 0 to 49, 0 to 49, 0 to 49. If I make that I mod 37, I'll get these smaller triangles that go from 0 to 36, right? Okay. Um, so let's look at another example of what we can do with mod. So let's now, this time we'll use the position of an object that's animating. Um, I'm going to say that there's var x will be equal to the frame count mod, let's say, mm, 100. Now, the frame count, as you may know, is a number which is counting the number of frames since the program was executed. If we want, we can print it out. Um, so let's print just to see what this looks like. We'll print uh, x plus a space to separate it, and then we'll print out uh, the frame count so we can see what it, what it actually uh, looks like. So x plus the frame count. And if we were to run this, okay, we'll see, oh, it's counting up to 100. But then x is, keeps 
is, is constrained to the range from 0 to 99, even though the frame count continues up indefinitely as long as we run the program. Okay, which means we can use this for animation in some interesting ways. If I were to draw an ellipse, which is located at um, x across and uh, height over 2 down, which was, let's say, 50 by 50 pixels, uh, and I'll set the fill to my favorite color, which is like a pink, 200, 200. Then we run that. Here's this little circle that you can see over here, and it keeps moving across this way and then repeating. So I've gotten periodic repetitive motion in the same way by using mod of a continually increasing quantity. So for my next trick, we're going to use mod to determine whether a number is odd or even and use that to create a different kind of repeating pattern, in this case, a checkerboard. Uh, so let's go. Uh, I'm going to say for, oh, let me turn off my little pink dot there. Okay, for var i equals zero, i is less than, let's say, eight for a checkerboard, eight squares across, i plus plus. I'll set my background to middle gray so that it's uh, not black nor white. And let's just draw a, a, a square. I'll set my fill to white for the start. 255 is white um, in a grayscale color. And let's draw a little rect. We'll say that there's a rect, and I'll draw it at i times uh, 50, uh, located at uh, height over 2 down. And we'll make it 50 across, 50, 50 in, uh, width and height. And let's just draw that. Here we go. OK, great. So I've got eight squares, as you can see right there, eight squares. But they're all white. Now suppose I want to have every other square be black, right? Black, white, black, white, black, white, black. How do I do that? Well, I can tell whether something is odd or even by looking at i mod 2. Think about it. i mod 2, if i were to be 0, 0 divided by 2, well, 0, and the remainder, what's left over, is 0. 1 mod 2, 2 goes into 1 0 times with 1 left over. 2 mod 2. 2 goes into 2 one time, 0 left over. 3 mod 2, well, 2 goes into 3 one time with 1 left over. And so we see that pattern again, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. That's our odd, even, odd, even, odd, even uh, pattern, and we're going to use that. So let's say the following. Let's, you make, let's make a little, uh, a little test for this. We'll say, if i mod 2 is equal to 0, which is to say, if it's an even number, if it has zero left over, then I'll set the fill to white. Else, I'll set the fill to black. So there we see the fill is white if i mod 2 is zero. Otherwise, the fill is black. And we run this. And look, there it is, white, black, white, black. For my final trick, I'd like to show you just a kind of one last program that kind of summarizes, in a way, what we've already learned today about mod. Uh, and this is a program that begins in the following way. I have a, a constant called number of elements, n elements, and I'm going to say it's 10 for the time being. Uh, and I have a, a variable called my counter, which is going to count the number of times that I press a key on the keyboard. Uh, I set up my canvas. That's a standard kind of boilerplate thing. And then over here, uh, I have a, in my key press function, you'll see that I'm going to say my counter equals my counter plus one. So every time I press the key, I'm going to increment my counter. Uh, for those of you who like to save a few, a few keys on, on key pressed, you can um, say my counter plus plus, same thing. Uh, and I'm also going to make a little, a little bell uh, or, or a, little, a little click sound whenever I, I do that. So downstairs, I have some, some playing stuff that plays a sound. Uh, so let's just uh, run that. And here's the program. The draw uh, is, uh, we'll get into it in a minute, but it basically uh, it draws some stuff based on the mod function. We'll talk about how that works in a second. Down here in display text, I sort of show what the text is, and then I got some stuff to load and play the sounds. But the goodies are really all up here in setup and key press. Let's, let's just kind of run. So here I am, and whenever I, I click the button uh, on the keyboard, it's going to increment my counter. So now my counter is 1, and of course my counter mod 10 in this case is 1. Um, and then now I click it again, my counter mod 10 is 2, 7, 8, 9. Now when I press it one more time, my counter is going to increment to 10, but my counter mod 10 will be 0. And I can keep doing this. And you'll notice here that when I say something mod 10, I'm actually just looking at the ones digit. But if we change the number of elements to something unusual and prime, like 7, then I'm looking at the remainder after division. 
So this has all sorts of interesting uses. If you have, for example, an array of fixed length and you're putting elements into it and you want to sort of constantly add to the end and maybe pop off the beginning. Of course, there's other kinds of ways of doing that with data structures in JavaScript, but um, this is just a, a way that I can, I can constantly, uh, constantly what? Make sure that as I increment something, I'm, I'm constrained to arrange while producing periodic behavior. Finally, some last quick remarks. Can you take the mod of floating point numbers that have like fractional bits? Like, can you do like mod two pi or mod of 5.3? And the answer is yes, uh, but it depends on the environment you're in. So in processing and in P5, you can, but for example, in Arduino, you can't because it's an integer only system. And that's actually more common. And if you're using open frameworks, uh, which is a sort of C++ based environment, um, you actually can't use the mod operator with a little percent sign for doing mod. Instead, if you want to do floating point mod, you have to use a function called fmod, uh, which is a little, a little different function specifically for floating point modulus operated operations. Lastly, what is something mod zero? Hmm. Well, actually it's undefined because you're asking for the remainder after dividing something by zero. And there it depends on how your environment treats the division by zero. In the case of, um, uh, of P5JS, if I say um, over here, if I say uh, void setup, oops, excuse me, function setup, <laughs> a little bit of Java there, uh, and if I say print um, five mod zero, what's gonna happen? In P5JS, I'll get null. That's actually kind of saving your butt there, but uh, in processing, Let's run that. Here's processing. Okay, what do we get? If I say print line five mod zero, what happens? Oh, I get an arith arithmetic exception, division by zero. So be careful. Um, you can end up with, with problems if you do mod zero. Uh, and that's all for today. Thanks everyone.